But let's turn our attention to the college games. Some big um, college games uh, on tap this weekend as well. Headlined Ohio State, Oregon, 2 3 in the country. What do you see from this one? And, and um, a lot of Buckeye fans in this area, what do they need to do and be aware of if they're going to get a win in this one? Well, it's the game of the year in the Big Ten. These these have long been thought to be the two best teams, and it's it's a big road trip for Ohio State, obviously, out to Austin Stadium and Eugene. But the big thing for Ohio State is to continue playing as physically as they've played. They've got arguably the best game, the best run game in the country right now. Chip Kelly, of course, calling plays. Quinshawn Judkins and Travion Henderson in the backfield. They're monsters. And, and Ohio State's offensive line really has a chance to dominate against Oregon's defensive line. Ohio State's offensive line is 13th in run in run blocking grade right now in the country. Oregon's defensive line is 95th in run defense grade. That is the matchup. If Chip Kelly can find a way to continue to just run the ball right down the pipe on Oregon, Oregon's been better in pass defense, better in the pass rush, better in coverage, but the run D has kind of shown cracks in the armor even when they've played lesser competition. And obviously it's a little tilted because they had to play Boise State and Ashton Gentry earlier in the year, but Look for Ohio State to be physical up front in the run game. And the same thing holds on defense. Look, Oregon's offensive line has not been great this year, and Ohio State has one of the two or three best D-lines in the country with Jack Sawyer, Tyleek Williams, JT Tua, Molowau. It's going to be a battle in the trenches. If Ohio State wins this game in the trenches, which I do think they have an advantage on both sides of the ball there, that's where they're going to want to win. Uh, Oregon, what, what do they need to be – what does Ohio State need to be concerned with uh, with the Ducks' offense especially? Um, they have balance and Dylan Gabriel gets rid of the ball very, very quickly. So I, I think what you're going to see where Oregon has struggled is creating explosive plays down the field, right? Gabriel's been really good within this like 15 yard bubble, making a lot of shorter throws to Tej Johnson and Evan Stewart, even a Trayshawn Holden, but it's been very workmanlike more so. And we're used to seeing Oregon create more explosive plays, What you don't want if you're Ohio state. You don't want this to be the week that Oregon finds a deep ball because that's the one thing. It's deep ball, and Oregon, has they kind of struggle to finish drives, right? And, and, and so either whether it be long touchdowns or even in the red zone, Oregon isn't – it might seem weird because they're, they're still high scoring and they've scored 30-plus on, I think, every team they've played. But it's been – it's – not been as easy as it usually is or it was the last two years for Oregon so I think the first thing for me especially early in the game I'm curious if Oregon's going to take shots downfield because they really need it if you're Ohio State in the secondary you need to be very wary of not giving up an early big play that could turn the game around all right Texas Oklahoma um, another big one what do you see from that um, I, on paper, this should go Texas's way, honestly. Uh, Oklahoma struggled on offense all year. Uh, just came out that their best wide receiver, Deion Burks, is likely out for this game. They've got a true freshman starting at quarterback. And this game is really about Texas needing to assert their dominance and the return of Quinn Ewers, right? They, they're getting Quinn Ewers back after a couple games out with injury. We saw flashes of Arch Manning, but this is Quinn Ewers' team. He took him to the playoffs last year. Lost to Oklahoma last year due to turnovers. Oklahoma's defense is a real problem, but what this should be is a statement game for Texas. Ewers is back. The secondary is playing better than it did at any point last year, and Oklahoma's offense is really nothing they should be afraid of, especially without Deion Burks. I expect Texas to win big and win really on both sides of the ball.